Hey good fellows, in this video I'm going to react to Gentleman's Gazette video about if the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149, 146, 144 are worth it. Let's discover it. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette in our second installment of Is It Worth It? Today we discuss Mont Blanc pens, fountain pens and roller balls. Good topic. The use of... If you didn't see my video yet about the first video that, that, that I reacted on his um, of one of his video, then make sure to check it out. It's up here. Uh, this guy knows something about pens, and I think it's super interesting to listen to him. And he brings a certain kind of approach into into pens, which you know is a bit broader because he generally on Gentleman's Gazette talks about style overall. If you haven't already seen the first installment of What Is Worth It about Burberry trench coats, you can check it out here. Now, today is all about Mont Blanc pens, and we don't only discuss the difference about the pen type, such as fountain pen, rollerball, and ballpoint pen, but also limited editions, Star Walker, and the Meisterstück edition. After all, Mont Blanc today is a status symbol, it is a recognizable luxury brand, and it so is. we ask, is it worth your money or not? When I was a teenager, I started collecting fountain pens, particularly Mont Blanc fountain pens. And Just before we keep on going, I know that I already interrupted twice, uh, but I think this is a super logic question. A lot of people think that Mont Blanc uh, is just a brand name. Now we're going to discover what he has to say, but obviously, you know, a brand becomes a brand. There's always a reason behind it. And so super interesting to know, even for people that might not be into um, pants, let's not forget that this guy has 1.2 million visualization on this video. One point in time, I had over a hundred of them in my collection. Although they were mostly vintage, I learned a lot about the brand, the history, the materials, the nibs, and everything that goes into making a fountain pen. Over time, I lost interest in collecting and I sold most of them off. However, I kept a few of them simply because I really liked them and they were timeless pieces that were really worth it to me. So what's so special about these pens and why did I decide to keep those? First of all, it is a timeless and classic design. I always get sad when they say that they sold their collection and they got uh, they got lost interest in collecting pens. How can you lose interest interest in collecting pens? I mean, just keep on collecting them. Maybe buy less in the future, but keep them. I mean, it's part of your heritage. Now, I obviously, I understand we cannot keep on collecting, collecting. But for me, this is a personal feeling I always get. It has a torpedo shape, and it was first introduced to the market in 1951. I also like it a lot because it's the biggest pen in the Mont Blanc fountain pen range and it's very thick yeah, with awesome. about 13 millimeters at the grip. I find it's a great fountain pen to take notes and especially for signatures because you can untwist it with just one rotation and quickly sign it and if you have a nib with a certain width you get a really characteristic look that is very hard to fake or copy. In combination with a green ink that I use with my fountain pens, it becomes very difficult to imitate my signature. Because the fountain so pen is so big, yeah. it often doesn't fit in regular cases. So if you look for one, make sure it fits and test it before you buy. I really like <laughs> Good, good detail. Very important. The 149 is also called the Presidente. It's totally a signature piece. It's a CEO pen. It's a diplomatic pen. Um, so it's totally a signature kind of, uh, of pen for important contracts and important moments. The 149 for its large gold nib. Mont Blanc has excellent nibs mm -hmm. that have the right amount of springiness without being too boring. They're very comfortable to write. And because they're made out of gold, they will easily adapt to your hand, mm -hmm. to your style of True. writing, and they will remain like that for years to come. Why do I have three fountain pens of exactly the same model, you might wonder? It's because of the nib width. I have a vintage model from the 50s, which an EF nib, which stands for extra fine, and it has a very mm -hmm. different look than a broad nib, mm -hmm. which is what I usually use to write and take notes on an everyday basis. And that is even slimmer than a very wide O3B nib, which means it's three times as broad as a regular one and it's just <laughs> a very wide look and I, I think that's super cool the fact that you know you have all this nip width and uh, that gives you really the chance to actually um, discover uh, and use the pen for different occasions if you have to sign you might want to go for an OBB nib if you want to sign a card then you're gonna go for an OBB or for a B nib but if you want to write journals or so on then you're probably gonna go for a fine one I use it only for signatures. 
the name 149 yeah, wasn't just made up, but back in the day, Mont Blanc had a system where one denoted the masterpiece, which was the highest mm -hmm. category of fountain pen you could get from them. They also mm -hmm. had a second grade and a third tier. However, they've discontinued those today. The four stood for the interior piston filler mechanism, which meant you didn't use cartridges, but a lever that you would twist at the back. It's the same today. You don't use cartridges. You simply hold the nip mm -hmm. into an inkwell and then turn the back knob. Magical. Nine for the nip size on a scale from one being the smallest and nine being the largest. A larger nip has more flexibility, a nicer springiness, and in general, when it comes to fountain pens, larger nips are better. Something on Mont Blanc pens had since almost the beginning is the hexagonal white shape on top of a black background. It's supposed to resemble the snow on top of the Mont Blanc mountain in France, yeah, which is informed, the highest mountain, very informed, and they chose amazing. it because supposedly they wanted to represent the high quality, and a Mont Blanc pen was supposed to be the best in class. As you might notice, all Mont Blanc nibs have 4810 on it, which is actually the height in meters of the Mont Blanc mountain. Now, if you like the design of the Meisterstück 149, but you have smaller hands, I suggest to look into the 146, which means it has a smaller nib, but also a smaller body, or if you have very mm -hmm. small hands, or if you're a woman with likewise very small hands, maybe a 144 is right for you. Traditionally, you could find the 149 only in a yellow gold plating on the clip mm -hmm. and on the bands. Today, you can also find it in platinum or rose gold. Rose the nib gold. design has changed over time. The, the first time they released the rose gold 149 was for the 90 years of uh, the Meisterstück. And so if you have that specific pen, it's going to have a 90 on the nib. Uh, absolute must must have. Um, also, I think it's important to say that 146 is probably the um, most common Meisterstück. It's not the 149. The 149 is really for specific people who want specific kind of uh, a specific kind of pen because it also it has this very important look when uh, uh, you you hold it in hand and when you sign. The 146 is the the most. Uh, used one and the classic uh, uh, is like he said uh, more common with ladies but obviously not only also just people that prefer a bit smaller font and pens sometimes it's 14 karat gold sometimes 18 karat sometimes it has yellow gold white gold and yellow gold sometimes it's just yellow gold at the tip and then mm -hmm. all platinum or white gold in any case it always has an iridium tip which is a very mm -hmm. hard material that keeps your nip from wearing without mm -hmm. sacrificing on the comfort of riding with it. Yeah. So a lot of people say, yeah, but you know, pens at the end, uh, uh, nibs always have an iridium point, so you're riding with the iridium point. That is not true in that sense. Obviously, you have the iridium point, but the peculiarities and the features that the gold on the nib give you, the flexibility, the smoothness, the warmth, the fact that it also, help the, uh, it also helps the ink to flow better, it's uncomparable to any other material. And that's why we have gold nibs plus gold nibs are super difficult to create because it's a very soft material and therefore really requires certain skills and certain machines that have to be developed from scratch by the brand that creates this kind of nib. Even though the name Mont Blanc sounds very French, Sorry, before we keep on going, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're watching this right now. A lot of you people who are watching haven't subscribed yet. It's just one little thing that helps me so much and it helps me just grow my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Let's keep on going. The company is in fact German and was founded in Hamburg. Is the Mont Blanc mm -hmm. 149 Meisterstück fountain pen worth its money? When I bought the Meisterstück 149, 10 to 15 years ago, I paid about a quarter of what I would have to pay today. <laughs> So to me, that's a great investment, even though you consider inflation. Also, the Mont Blanc 149 is a very recognizable writing instrument. It's used by several heads of states around the globe mm -hmm. to sign mm. certain things. <laughs> it is made of a resin these days, which is very scratch resistant and nice to the touch. So if you have a large hands and you like a classic design that stands the test of time, that will have a value that increases over time, even though you use the pen, then it's definitely worth it. When I started collecting fountain pens, the retail price for a one for nine was about $400. Today, it's 935. If you don't want to shell mm -hmm. that much money, but still want to go with that kind of a pen, you can go to the used market. There are lots of 149 available, but there are also lots of fakes out there. So rather than just going to eBay and buying any random pen, 
I suggest you go with a trusted seller for used fountain pens that nobody is selling, point. but Bravo. has a reputation to uphold. And now they just had a price increase, so the, the 149 might be around the thousand. Uh, I think it's a normal price for, for that kind of pen. It's a resin pen, so you know could be also 800, but at the end of the day, it's also Mont Blanc, so they have to make sure that the, this uh, pen has a certain kind of performance after sales service. That's obviously always also what you pay for. You pay also for the fact of owning a Mont Blanc, that's one thing. You pay for the quality, the research and development behind the product that guarantees the fact that they produce uh, that many pieces that always perform and so therefore I think 1000 francs for a piston filling mechanism with that ink window with the 18 karat gold nib uh, in resin uh, with that kind of plating that's, that really doesn't wear out legit. Because then you get a better pen. It also pays to look at the details such as the clip and look at the original see how it's made. The originals are finished very well they are plate it very heavily so it won't just come up mm -hmm. and rub off. They always have a laser imprinted serial number which mm -hmm. cheaper versions oftentimes don't. Now when you buy a fountain pen it's important to remember that it needs to be written in and when you write in your fountain pen it becomes better over time. Now if you hand it over to someone else to write it with it will change the characteristic and it will take quite a bit of time to rewrite it into your hand again. Therefore, Okay, that, that, that I don't agree with. I mean, it takes time to actually adapt to your writing style because of uh, the, the, the smoothness of the gold. So if you give your gold pen, gold nipped pen to someone, it's not going to be a problem. On the other end, you might help that person to actually get into fountain pens and that's something super nice. Um, it's definitely not like this that you hand it over and this guy is pretty much going to ruin uh, work of, of months but uh, you know the, the pen doesn't adapt that fast it's something that takes time and you have to write a lot with it and maybe it's maybe also us adapting to the pen and therefore the pen automatically adapts uh, to us so I don't fully agree on this statement. A fountain pen should only be written by you and if you buy a used pen bear in mind that it has to be written in it will take some time. So at the end of the day is the 149 worth it? I think yes, absolutely, if you have the money. Sorry, I do agree that pens with the time get better and better. Huh? I mean, the more you use a fountain pen, the more the pen writes better and feels better. Money and if you can afford it. If you want to likewise a big quality running instrument without the cachet of it, maybe a Pelican M1000 is right for you. In my opinion, the design is not as elegant. It usually comes in a dark green barrel. I think you can also get it with a black one. Mm -hmm. But it is good. It's working well but it definitely lacks the status symbol of That's the true. 149. Yeah. If you like a more modern yeah. aesthetic? It's a great writer, I suggest you look but into you cannot compare it to the 149. It was recognized by the MoMA in New York as an outstanding unique design. As such, it's a design classic, but I still think not as classic and timeless as the 149. All right, now that you know the 149 is worth it, what about other Mont Blanc pens? No matter what Mont Blanc item you have, it will always be a recognizable status symbol. If that is too flashy for you, it's maybe not the right brand for you. Also, other Mont Blanc models have come and gone over time, but the one constant that has always been in their lineup is the one for nine. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of ballpoint pens because I associate it with a very cheap pen that doesn't roll very easily, it's not very comfortable to write, and it sometimes leaks and leaves ugly stains inside of your suit pocket. So if you want yeah, and beside that, it just doesn't feel the same, you know, to have a nice pen to write with. I'm also not a fan of ballpoints, but writing with a normal ballpoint and writing with a Mont Blanc ballpoint or a Graf from Faber Castell or a Carandash ballpoint or a Notte Hood ballpoint or a Monte Grappa ballpoint is just another kind of feeling. Want a mix? I suggest to always go with a roller ball because it roller ball. I'm also a big fan. It has a ball, just like a ballpoint pen, but it rolls much more smoothly and it's more comfortable to write. Personally, I always yeah. go with a fountain pen, even if I travel by plane, because I think the look of my handwriting is just much superior and it has a very different character than if character I Character is a good pen. word. It's yeah. always the same thickness. My personal preference yeah. is aside. If you look at the value development of ballpoint pens and rollerballs, the fountain pen is always higher and appreciates yeah. more. Therefore, yeah, I think the rollerball and ballpoints are not as worth it unless you really hate a fountain pen or you travel by plane a lot. 
for collecting purposes. The regular Meisterstück series is not limited by any means, and therefore you'll only have a certain degree of appreciation over time. However, if you go with limited editions from Mont Blanc, you can look at those <laughs> as an investment, just like maybe art, musical instruments, or stocks. Today, Mont Blanc has lots of different limited editions. Some are very... I, I wish one could still buy that Shakespeare Fountain Pen limited edition that runs for 12,000 nowadays. It used to be $3,800. Very high priced, others are very low priced, but if you look at some of their very early editions, such as the 1992 Ernest Hemingway pen, which was part of the Writer's Edition, and it was based on the 149, but it looked more like its predecessor, the 139. It had a coral orange barrel with dark brown elements. And today, if you want an unused version, you have to pay anywhere between three, three and a half, and four thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, right. At the time right. when it was launched, it cost just 10% of that. And during that same time span, maybe a regular fountain pen only doubled, tripled, or quadrupled in price. So investing in those limited editions is definitely worth it over time. Yeah, you good points, bravo. Also, he knows, he knows a lot about it. He knows a lot about it. You must never write them. Very just knowledgeable them person. In the original box with original papers and just keep them in the safe. Now, yeah. personally, I don't like it very much. I like to use the quality items I own. On the other hand, Mont Blanc also produces very small limited editions, sometimes made with solid gold. And those are very expensive when you buy them. But amongst collectors, usually the prices go up quite a bit. So what about yeah, other pen pens? Like, went let's up say, like crazy at Star Walker series. 12, 13, it's a more modern pen. It's a more streamlined design. It oftentimes speaks to younger people with a more clean aesthetic yeah, or people that was who like when they try to do stuff. the redesign. Personally, I'm not too fond of the design and I think it'll go out of style in 10 or 20 years. We had other Mont Blanc series and they ran out of favor. Now for collectors, that can be a nice thing because they're not around anymore and thus the price goes up. On the other hand, it can also mean there's just not a demand for it and so people don't like exactly. it. Exactly. At the end of the day, exactly. when it comes to a pen, you always want to have a really wonderful nib that highlights your character of your handwriting because that's what makes it unique and special. With the Mont Blanc Star Walker series, I think you're even more likely to get a fake product on the used market. So they, they did quite a few fakes on the Mont Blanc Star Walker. Um, I think the Mont Blanc Star Walker is just a bit more of a uh, classic design. Uh, not classic, a bit more of a modern design. Will it go out of um, style? Obviously, it's not a Mont Blanc Meisterstück, that's for sure, absolutely agreed on that. Uh, but I think, still think that it could be a very nice uh, daily writer that you can use and appreciate. Pay very close attention to where you buy, otherwise you pay several hundred dollars for something that is worth nothing. For today's video, I chose to wear a classic stroller suit ensemble with a twist. I chose a black jacket because the Mont Blanc 149 is also black. I combined it with a black and white houndstooth pair of slacks and typically this is a combination that is very formal and the equivalent for day wear for a tuxedo. Now because <laughs> I thought that would be too formal I decided to combine it with a light blue shirt rather than with a white <laughs> shirt and I went with a wool mm -hmm. shelly tie in orange, turquoise and olive grey. I picked up the tones of orange and green and blue in my silk pocket square, which is contrasting in texture to the tie, and both of them are from Fort Belvedere, and you can find them in our shop here. I picked up the green elements in the pocket square and the tie. That's nothing to do with, with uh, um, fountain pens anymore, but it shows it's also how much fountain, spend, fountain still pens still are part of a whole uh, lifestyle of an outfit, and it goes way beyond just, uh, you know, gray, being a um, writer, and that's and it. It's, part, it's a beautiful personal luxury accessory together. that you carry with you with all the beautiful things that you can wear and have in your life. So it picks up the color in my pants. So guys, it's finished. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you what you think about this review. I think he did a great job. I really appreciate it. Uh, he gave very good information to people who might not be into fountain pens yet. Therefore, uh, you know, great utility to the industry, great utility to let people understand what it's about in this in this beautiful world and what it means to own, for example, an iconic fountain pen like the 149, like a Mont Blanc fountain pen. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget 
forget to subscribe but once again to the channel please just hit that like button and that subscribe button stay tuned for more content coming up we're shooting a lot of content at least two uh, videos per week and don't forget that together we are changing the game